By 1925, Vice Admiral Hiraga had established himself quite comfortably as head of the Naval Design Department. However, he began to fall out of favor with the General Naval Staff, whom would place orders for warships, because they would often give him a set of directives that they wanted in the design, and Hiraga would often ignore these directives, creating his own vessels. Now this does not mean that the General Naval Staff was unhappy with Hiraga's designs. The Yubari is considered revolutionary because it incorporated the armor belt into the structure of the ship. Even with Hiraga's revolutionary thinking, as in the case with the Yubari, his ships all had common flaws as far as the General Naval Staff was concerned. They were very long vessels, which meant the armored box had to be larger than was needed, and the armor could not be as thick as would be found on a more compact vessel for similar statistics. He would be replaced in 1925 with Captain Fujimoto. Fujimoto would take the directives from the General Naval Staff and apply them to his design work while also creating more compact vessels. Fujimoto is considered a more strategic thinker when it came to design work. Now obviously, taking the directives from the General Naval Staff at face often led to design issues, primarily stability complications, and in 1934 this would escalate when a torpedo boat capsized in a storm and Fujimoto found himself suspended pending investigation. Once the investigation was complete, Fujimoto was let off without consequence because the Naval General Staff's directives played a major role in the capsizing of the boat, and thus they considered no one necessarily independent to blame. However, Fujimoto had always suffered from a severe drinking problem, and when he was suspended, this escalated, and in 1935, he would die from a stroke, often believed to be related from this increase in drinking. This moves us back a little bit to October of 1934, following the investigation. Fujimoto and Hiraga are both a part of the design team for the new A140 project. As Japan began to re-isolate itself in the 1930s and leave treaties that it had once cooperated with in the West, they began to look into designing a brand new super battleship, and this would obviously become the Yamato class, design A140 F6. During the design inputs for A140, we can note that there is a massive variety of designs, whether it be from turret layout, dimensions, gun caliber, propulsion system, armor thicknesses, you name it, it was different from design to design. Now the reason for this wide variety in designs actually predates October of 1934 when the A140 project officially started. And this is because Hiraga and Fujimoto were both independently leading teams to create super battleships. However, without the government calling for these ships, they had no chance of actually being built. In 1929, Hiraga created two similar designs. We have this one, which mounts a single dual turret and two quadruple turrets, much like we can see on the future King George V for the Royal Navy, and the other design looks very similar, except it has three triple turrets. The quadruple turret design would mount 10 41 centimeter, or 16.1 inch guns, with two super firing forward and a single turret aft. Its estimated standard displacement would be 35,000 tons. As for the triple turret design, it is mounting nine 356 millimeter, or 14 inch guns in three turrets, two super firing forward and one aft, and this vessel would have an estimated standard displacement of 30,000 tons. Both vessels would have quite an impressive armor belt. It was estimated to be about 15 inches or 381 millimeters thick, and it would be inclined outward. Just for reference, this is one inch or 25 millimeters less than the actual Yamato. Unfortunately, there are points on this design that the Naval General Staff would not be enthusiastic about. First off, it has a standard Hiraga hull, which is extremely long with a very large unprotected bow and stern, and it also has the standardized casemate-style secondary guns, rather than just placing them all in turrets. The Naval General Staff did not appear to approve of either one of these designs in any respect, and so Hiraga went back to the drawing board and created another design, which has gone down known as Design X. Now this design gets interesting when we look at the armaments for both the primary and secondary turrets. There would be four primary turrets, two triple and two dual, mounting a brand new 41 centimeter 50 caliber gun. The secondary turrets, which there would be two per side, would incorporate two 14 centimeter 55 caliber guns. The secondary turrets were also dual purpose, giving a maximum elevation of 75 degrees. 
Unfortunately, this design still has the standard lengthy Hiraga hull, and he still could not let go of secondary guns being placed in casemates along that hull. Regardless of this, the Naval General Staff appears to have liked this design as they had a mock-up model created of it, which you can see on your screen now. However, there is one important feature from this design that actually influences the A140 project, and this is the cross-section showing the ship's internal structure. The main armor belt for this design would be 14 inches thick, inclined outward at about 20 degrees, and the belt was incorporated into the structure of the ship. This is what the Yamato class would end up using, with the exception of the armor belt being 16 inches thick. One design feature here that we can see was eventually dumped on the actual Yamato design was having this thin outer hull in front of the armor belt. Now even though it appears the Naval General Staff was happy with this design, Hiraga was not done. He had one more design in mind, and this would be an ultimate battleship design, coming in at an estimated standard displacement of 62,000 tons. Hiraga envisioned a ship with a similar layout to the Royal Navy's Nelson-class battleships, however, in this case, it would mount nine 45cm, or 17.5-inch guns, in three triple turrets. The secondary armament would all be placed aft on the center line, and this would be three triple turrets mounting 20 centimeter guns. And as for high angle anti aircraft protection, there would be six coaxial Type 89 12.7 centimeter guns along the superstructure. One important feature we can see in this design that eventually gets used during the A140 project is the estimated impregnability range of the armor box. This means that if the ship is being hit by another vessel carrying 45 centimeter guns, its armor could withstand the shot from 20 to 30 kilometers distance, and this was the range that the Yamato class was designed under when incorporating a 46 centimeter gun. That is a look at all of Hiraga's designs, and so now it's time to take a look at what Fujimoto was cooking up. Fujimoto's first design would have an estimated standard displacement of 35,000 tons, and the main armament consisted of nine 41 centimeter guns and three triple turrets. Now the secondary armament would be the 14 centimeter 55 caliber gun, which means that this must have been an actual gun caliber investigated by the Imperial Japanese Navy for production, as Hiraga had also used this on one of the designs that I had already mentioned. Now there are a series of features that we can see here similar to the eventual A140 project, such as the shape of the main deck at the bow, which is a very spoon-like shape. Then we can also see that most of the armaments are concentrated along the superstructure and they are all encased in protective sheeting, and the area around the main guns is largely vacant to protect equipment from the blast of the large guns. Now that is the only design Fujimoto came up with under the table. By April of 1934, the Naval General Staff had asked him to research designs mounting 46 centimeter guns with the hull being of an unrestricted size because the future enemy was obviously going to be the United States Navy and due to restrictions placed down by the Panama Canal, the Japanese were confident the United States could not build battleships with 46 centimeter guns on unrestricted scales. Now before we look at these designs, there are a few interesting points that I would like to make about them. The first point is, Fujimoto believed that the United States Royal Navy would catch on to the 46 centimeter gun and begin producing ships with the same gun caliber. And thus, instead of having to build all new ships, he would build these designs with triple turrets so that the barbette could be large enough to upgun them to dual 51 centimeter guns, which it is known the Japanese created at least one such weapon, however they destroyed it before World War II ended. Another design feature was he would need to alter the Pagoda Mass Tower, because the extreme blast pressure of the 46cm and eventual 51cm guns would damage equipment and kill the commanding crew within the tower, and thus we would see the first designs for the tower bridge, which was a fully enclosed structure. The decommissioned battlecruiser Hiei, which had yet to go through any reconstructions, was selected as a test bed for the new tower bridge. Though this reconstruction would not happen until 1937, it still predated the completed Yamato class, which gave the Japanese results on the enclosed structure as positive. The first design was an absolute monster. It had an overall length of 301 meters, or 990 feet, and it had a top speed of 32 knots acting on six propellers. 
Now a component to this design that was eventually investigated in the official A140 project is the propulsion system using diesel over the steam turbine since the Japanese were leaning towards this. However, eventually they did go with the steam turbine because if the diesel engine breaks down or wears out, they would have to replace the whole thing, which means you have to open the armored box, which on these dimensions was no easy task. We can also see the incorporation of three triple 46 centimeter turrets, all focused forward in the Mogami style layout. We can also see that the Japanese were already planning on upgunning the Mogami class, as we can see four of the 15.5 centimeter triple turrets located at the stern of this design. Now, obviously, this 67,000 ton design was impractical, and so it was logically downsized into a 50,000 ton ship that had an overall length of 289 meters or 950 feet with a top speed of 28 knots, only acting on four propellers this time. To help reduce the length of the ship, we can see that the Japanese opted for the Nelson style turret layout for the main battery rather than the Mogami style. We can also see that one of the 15.5 centimeter turrets was removed from the stern and placed at the bow of the ship just behind the number 346 centimeter turret. Now there is only one more design to look at following this one, however I want to add in one more important person to the A140 project, and this is because he'd be one of the three primary designers running up against Hiraga and Fujimoto, and this was Fukuda. The Naval General Staff was preparing Fukuda to take over as head of the design department from Fujimoto due to the issues that I had already previously mentioned about Fujimoto. When Fukuda designed this ship, Fujimoto was suspended following the torpedo boat capsizing, and Fujimoto would not be put back as head of the design department until January 1st, 1935, but as fate would have it, he ended up dying the next day, and Fukuda took his place. Fukuda, being a trustee of Hiraga, also inherited some of Hiraga's flaws, such as ignoring directives laid by the Naval General Staff, and we can really see this in the superstructure of this design, which does not follow the lines of what was planned for the Hiei. This design looks a lot like Fujimoto's previous design with the Nelson-style turret layout for the triple 46 centimeter turrets. However, the secondary armament is where this design is particularly different. Instead of having four triple turrets from the Mogami class, Fukuda opted for four dual turrets mounting the 15.5 centimeter gun, which doesn't make sense if the Japanese are already planning on removing the triple turret from the Mogamis. Ultimately, the similarities to Fujimoto's previous design are uncanny, and this only results in a displacement difference of 5,000, as this is a 55,000 ton design. With that having been said, that wraps up all of the pre-A140 designs, and now hopefully there is an understanding as to why the A140 project was as wild as it was. If you have enjoyed today's video, why not leave a like and comment down below, and have a wonderful day.